Steam Deck is the first experience of Valve in making handheld consoles. Has this console been able to become a successful product? Stay with Megagital by checking Steam Deck. After opening the bag and holding the Steam Deck, the first word that comes to mind is wide. Especially if, like me, your handheld console was the Nintendo Switch before, you will be surprised by the size of the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck measures 298 by 117 by 49 mm, which is about 6 cm wider than the Switch. On the other hand, the Steam Deck, weighing 669 grams, is by no means considered a light console. For comparison, it is not bad to know that the Switch with its joysticks weighs 398 grams. However, the Steam Deck is an incredibly comfortable console and the way all the components of the console are placed shows how much thought Valve put into its design. The weight distribution of the console is also so good that it does not tire the hand at all during long-term use. On both sides of the console, there are ridges on which the palm rests, giving the user the feeling of a controller such as DualSense or an Xbox controller. This console has a 7-inch screen with a resolution of 1280 by 800 and a brightness of 400 nits. Although the Steam Deck display is not able to display colors as clearly as a console display such as the Nintendo Switch OLED, but overall, this 60Hz display performed quite acceptable in our tests. In the lower part of the console, there is also a microSD port, through which you can increase the storage memory of the console. By default, the Steam Deck console comes in three capacities of 64, 256 and 512 gigabytes. Although all three of these consoles are similar in terms of hardware, processor, GPU and RAM, the speed of the memory used in them is different and the versions with a higher capacity have a higher memory speed. In addition, the 512GB version has an anti-reflective coating on the display. We can say with certainty that 64GB is really low for this console. Due to the large volume of Steam games, 64GB seems like a small amount of space to install games and to enjoy the console, at least 256 gigabytes version is recommended. However, you can solve this problem by getting a high capacity memory card. But note that the memory speed of this version is lower than the 256 gigabytes version. You should take into account that the Steam Deck is not easy to transport. The space occupied by the console with its bag is far more and unlike the Nintendo Switch, it cannot be placed in a coat pocket, jacket or even a back pocket. Steam Deck is not a console for use in subway, taxi, or bus. This console is mostly for relatively long trips, waiting rooms, and places where you have time to play for at least half an hour. The default operating system of the Steam Deck is the third version of SteamOS. In this version of the operating system, games are displayed as large tiles, and if you have experience using Steam before, you will quickly get used to the entire environment of the operating system. This operating system is a complete distribution of Linux and many packages can be installed on it. Installing software like Office and everything else available for this distribution makes the Steam Deck more than just a handheld console. By plugging in a USB Type-C hub, or getting Steam Deck's official $90 dock, which has an HDMI output, you can connect the Steam Deck to a display and connect a mouse and keyboard wirelessly from the Steam Deck as he used a Linux computer. Just by connecting a controller to the Steam Deck, experience the games on a bigger screen. However, considering the power of Steam, you should consider that the Steam Deck cannot easily run games at high resolutions even when connected to a display with a resolution of 1080p or higher. Although the USB Type-C port of the Steam Deck has the ability to output 4K at 120Hz or 8K at 60Hz. Valve has used AMD Integrated Processor for Steam Deck. The Steam Deck CPU uses the Zen 2 architecture and has a power equal to 448 gigaflops. On the other hand, the Steam Deck GPU has a power equivalent to 1.6 teraflops. Although this number seems very low compared to the 10 and 12 teraflops of the 9th generation consoles, you should consider that the Steam Deck is only designed to play games on its 1280 by 800 pixel screen. 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5 RAM is built into the Steam Deck which seems quite enough to run games. In our experience with Steam Deck, all games, both heavy games and indie games, ran as well as possible. The next major question regarding a handheld console is how long it takes to charge it. Velo has put a 40-watt-hour battery inside the Steam Deck and on its official website, 
it has rated the charging time of this battery for 2 to 8 hours. At first glance, it seems that this interval is a very wide interval, but in our experiments, this statement was realized to some extent. For graphics-heavy games like Control and Elden Ring, in our tests, the Steam Deck lasted about an hour and 50 minutes to 2 hours. But this number went up to 7 hours in independent games or games that are lighter in terms of graphics. Steam Deck is a very attractive console. A few years ago, no one would have thought that they would be able to experience the games of the day on an affordable portable console. Well, with Steam Deck, it showed that it is possible. The wonderful performance of games, a multi-purpose and very powerful console, high build quality and wonderful SteamOS software, and most importantly, full support for the Steam game library, are considered to be very attractive points of Steam Deck. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe us to be informed about our new videos. You can also read the full article about this video on www.megagital.com.